Lesson 65, The Coming Judgment. In today's lesson, we shall have a prophetic look at the coming judgments upon Jerusalem and the nation of Israel. There is much information in Jesus' prophetic words about what signs we should expect before and during the tribulation period and the return of Christ to judge the nations and reign upon the earth. The chapter begins with Jesus observing to his disciples a poor widow putting her last coins into the temple treasury. While many other rich folks put in a small portion of their wealth, Jesus explained to his disciples that the poor widow put in more than all the others, for she kept back nothing for herself. When we give to the Lord, God will evaluate it not based on the amount given, but on the degree of sacrifice it cost us. While some folks were admiring the temple to Jesus, he explained that in a coming day of judgment, the beautiful temple would be destroyed so that no stone would be left upon another. When the disciples heard these words, they asked him when these things would take place. What follows is a lengthy answer about two future judgments. Jesus will speak about the destruction of Jerusalem, which we know from history occurred in A.D. 70 at the hands of the Romans. They destroyed the city and the temple just as Jesus had predicted. Jesus also elaborates on God's judgment not only on Israel during a future tribulation, but also a judgment upon all nations upon the earth. These prophetic words are very important then for all of us, because much of Jesus' words have not yet been fulfilled. But we appear to be fast approaching the time when all these things shall come to pass. Let's look at the prophecy more closely. Jesus mentions at least 19 signs concerning the future judgments, some relating to the destruction of Jerusalem and the times following, and most have to do with the final stages before the Lord comes again in glory. Number one, Jesus mentions false messiahs will arise, and there will be wars and rumors of wars. These signs appear prior to his coming, which would be during a future tribulation period. Also, he said that nations and kingdoms will be at war, along with great earthquakes, famine, disease, and fearful sights and signs from heaven. Although we are seeing great earthquakes in various places like Japan, New Zealand, and Haiti, these are only preliminary to the natural disasters of the tribulation period. We also have plenty of famine and disease in our day, but we as yet have not seen any great signs in the heavens concerning the moon, sun, and stars, so we are safe to conclude that these are all future signs. Jesus mentions a persecution against his people prior to these signs, and this might refer to the Christians that have been persecuted down through the church age, but could also refer to the tribulation believers many of whom will be martyred for their faith. Now Jesus jumps back to the judgment on Jerusalem and speaks of the army surrounding the city to destroy it. Jesus warns that in that day the people should make haste to get out of the city before it is destroyed. He predicts that the Jews would be scattered to all nations until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. Jesus returns to the topic of the signs that appear just prior to his return, which includes signs in the sky with the sun and moon and stars. He says there will be distress and perplexity, and men's hearts will fail them for fear, as the power of the heaven is shaken. Finally, Jesus, who is called the Son of Man, will come in glory. When Jesus comes, it will be to overthrow the armies that are seeking to destroy Israel and to establish his kingdom on earth. After speaking about all these signs of his coming, he says that those who see these signs should look up, for their redemption is near. Jesus speaks to the believers of the tribulation period who will be fiercely persecuted 
but they can be assured that soon their Redeemer will come and rescue them. Jesus then tells us a parable about the fig tree. He says that when the blossoms appear, you will know that summer is very near. The fig tree is often a picture of the nation of Israel in the Old Testament. And Jesus is pointing out that when the signs of his coming are seen, then we can know that his coming in glory is very near. When Jesus said, this generation shall not pass away until all this is fulfilled, he could not have been referring to the generation living at the time he spoke these words, for although many of that generation witnessed the destruction of Jerusalem, they certainly did not see the Lord return to earth in glory. We are still waiting after two millennia for Jesus to return. So what did he mean by this generation? Some feel that from the time Israel once again became a nation, which happened in 1948, that the generation living at that time shall not pass away before they see the Lord's return. This seems to fit well with what Jesus has said which means that since 1948 to the present, there has been about 63 years. There are plenty still living who saw the formation of Israel in 1948, and the generation in scripture often equates to the average lifespan of a man, which is three score and 10 or 70 years. We cannot be certain for no man knows the day or the hour but the faithful should recognize the signs of the times and prepare themselves for the Lord's return at any moment from now. Are you ready? Prepare yourself by receiving Jesus as your Savior. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Luke chapter 21 verse 27.